thing that the copier does. Most of the stuff you'll never ever ever use, but some stuff might save you Sundays. So we'll go over where everything is, what all it does, and the complete capabilities of the machine. Um, the normal training process is going to be growing pains. There's basically like three different kinds of those. One, install growing pains. If the copier is jamming a lot, it's doing something funny, it's airing out, let us know. Don't just kick it like, oh, I hate the new machine. It's been moved off of a truck, onto a truck, over the curb, over that bump, over here. This machine is heavier than this finisher. It might get uneven. Hopefully, nothing. But there might be some of those growing pains. So just let us know. Um, if anybody needs to call, they can do it online. You can speak to a person. But this is your ID number. That tells them who you are, where you are, what model it is, the whole deal, what department it's in. So anything you need is related <coughs> to that number. Um, other growing pains is just kind of figuring out why it's airing out or why it's doing what it's doing. Um, always read these messages at top or if there's any error message go ahead and read it don't just go oh yeah oh I know what this is it's pretty intuitive it'll tell you eventually you can just skip it and you'll know exactly what's going on but it's good to read it first all right so this is the normal copy screen this is what is it's going to be on when you walk up to it um, this is the same control panel at every machine at every branch at every department that you have so if you know how to work one you know how to work them all <clears throat> all right, over here is your color section. It's defaulted to black, so you don't act accidentally make color copies. Um, if you need to make a color copy, hit auto color. Um, some stuff I'll skip too, like two color and single color, that's for copy shops that charge different way. You guys don't pay for toners, so it's extremely regardless. Um, full color, it basically makes every page color, even the black pages, but that charges a color click per every back page too. Um, it's for different functionality, isn't as true to your image, a little bit beefier and bolder, but auto color is your key button. That's what you want to use more than 98% of the time. Um, density, this is your lighter, darker stuff. Turn it up and down right there. Paper selections in this section. You will hardly ever use this because if you put it in the dock feed or on the glass and it's a normal size, it's going to automatically detect what that is and so you won't have to mess with it. But in instances, say for the bypass tray, where you've got some special paper or something that you're using, you can select the paper tray there. Um, if it beeps at you, there's always a message. So just read it. It says replenish paper because there's no paper in the bypass tray, but that's about it. Um, for thick stock and whatnot, you can put that in any of the drawers. It's best to run it out of the bypass tray. And we'll go over that a little bit later. Um, but you can pick the tray and then hit settings and label that particular tray or drawer as a certain type of thick stock or a special paper if you don't want it to accidentally pull, etc, etc. But we'll go over that because that's mostly on the print side. And everything that we talk about here and that I show you here can be done on the print side. In fact, that's mainly what you'll do. And all the terminology is pretty much the same. Then you've got your zoom sections. Um, you can go to the full screen by hitting the zoom button at the bottom and go up and down by little bitty increments if you want, 200%, 400%, all these selections under the sun. Uh, but normally, people use the auto enlarge and auto reduce buttons. Most common, 8.5 by 14 down to 8.5 by 11. It automatically picks the right percentage and will even pick the right paper drawer to do that. Alright, and then you've got original output. This is your one sided, two sided stuff. Basically, on each button on the left is what you start with, and on the right is what you're going to end up with. So, defaults one to one. You can do two to two, two to one, one to two, any variation thereof. But it basically is going to read two-sided copies and it can make two-sided copies. Um, combine, kind of a handy function, two and one, four and one, eight and one. Basically four and one puts four pages on one page. So you've got the old 80 page PowerPoint and you want to tile that down, just make sure you can read it still because it zooms it down, but basically puts four pages on one page so it cuts your copies in a fourth. Um, original type, it's a quality setting. It's defaulted to text slash photo. It's normally going to get it really, really, really good. But if for some reason you've got photo paper or a map, it can kind of detail it out a little bit more. Dot matrix original, etc. is good for those old faxes that have been sent like a hundred times. All right, finishing button. And again, normally you're going to do this stuff on the print side, but this is where it is for the copy side. So you've got corner staple. It should automatically pick where that staple goes, meaning if you are doing legal, 
copies and or legal and letter mixed. You of course have to put it in this way because legal paper won't fit in this way and it knows to put the staple on the opposite side. But if for some reason it's not, you can pick position setting and tell it which side you want it on. You've also got two position stapling. That's different than booklet mode. Two position stapling is basically like right here. Hardly anybody ever uses it because you guys have a booklet maker that actually puts the staples on the bind, which is much better. Um, you've also got two hole punch and three hole punch. And of course, two hole punch is usually for the top and whatnot. Fold and bind. Again, mostly on the print side, but you've got half fold, center and staple and fold, which is your booklet mode, which is basically this. And then you've also got trifold. And trifold is really cool because it's for mailers, including brochures, etc., etc. Uh, most of the time, that's just going to be single sheet. And again, if this is something you're going to do a lot of and you want to experiment with using, call me and I'll walk you through it because there's a few different settings because it can also nest. Meaning if you've got three pages and you want to send that as a folded invoice just like from the electric company, it'll do all three together in a fold. So you can nest and tell it, oh yeah, every three pages nest or every five, et cetera, et cetera. All right. And booklet mode is the best thing under the sun and if you're wanting to do that and can't figure it out, we'll send you simple instructions on the print side because basically you can set up a saved setting and I'll show you and I'm basically, I'll send it to you and send it out to everybody and you can set it up as a preset saved. It's only three functions, but what booklet mode does is automatically paginate. So you've got center staple and fold which would do this and then booklet mode is where you pick one sided, two sided and it's called booklet mode. What that does is paginate. So all this is is a regular old eight page PDF, eight and a half by 11. It knows when you do booklet <coughs> mode, because these are 11 by 17 sheets now, to put page one on the back half of the first sheet, page two on the inner half, but page three on the back half of the second sheet. So when it's folded, it's automatically paginated in a way to read booklet. And then center staple and fold also puts the staples to the bind there. And then you tell it, if you want, that, oh, I don't want it on 11 by 17, I want it on 8.5 by 11. It'll automatically put it on 8.5 by 11 sheets, shrink the image, and make mini booklets. So you can do up to a 60 page booklet. I'd suggest up to 40 page if it's really nice paper especially. Um, and you'll get feathering on a lot of the thicker booklets where the middle pages start sticking out a little bit. It's mm -hmm. not too bad, but if you want a real clean professional look and you're doing a bunch of them, you can always go have that cut. But it's always cheaper to do it here versus Kinko's or whatever. All right. So that's basics of basic copying, finishing, et cetera, et cetera, and most of the stuff that you'll use on the copy and print side. All of those functions and everything that the machine does is under the application button. It brings up a different menu, which is a full menu that you can <coughs> use like an iPad and scroll all the way across. You can go to different chapters and sections, or you can go one at a time with the arrows. The first one is the basics. This is all what was on the basic screen. The next one is basically original settings. So again, a lot of this you'll never use. Um, they've got turn auto rotate on and off, original settings like which way they're facing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, book original isn't booklet mode. That's for copying books. It's very tedious to set up. It's a pain in the butt. But if you have a 100 page book that you need to copy for some reason or another, you turn on book original, you set it in the middle, hit one to test it. Basically what it's going to do is instead of you laying half the book down, pushing start, going like this, and half the book down, pushing start, you realize you've done it backwards by page 20, etc., etc. What book, book mode, book original does, is scan the whole image and then split it in two, so it copies two pages at a time. So again, a rare function, but if you've got to copy a 100 page manual, that's the best way to do it. And it separates those pages and it can make booklets, et cetera, et cetera. Um, next is the kind of quality density section. You've got background removal. That is for newspapers or onion skin invoices where it sees back through the other side and picks that up. That'll get rid of that. Textman, text enhancement, the exact opposite. It keeps up everything that it finds. And glossy mode, um, again, better on the print side. As long as it's not two-sided or thick stock or anything like that, it's just a plain single sheet single pages print, you can turn on glossy mode. It slows down the machine a little bit, but it gives it a buffering and kind of makes the image shine a little bit. So it's really handy if you've got really good paper 
and you want that gloss in there though, and it turns it out real nice. Um, edit color, you've got negative positive image reverse that turns everything white black, everything black white. And color adjustments, there's everything under the sun here from brightness, greens, reds, hues, contrast, just to try to get that Coca Cola red really right. Again, that's only really for copying. The print side is really what you want to do. In fact, it's almost better to scan it in and get it into a program to try to change the colors to get it to print correctly. But if for some reason you've got to get a copyright, that's where it is. Then you've got layout. This is where booklet mode is, and easier on the print side. You can do page margins, gets rid of wherever you tell the page margins are, so you can get rid of like notes or dark hole punch circles. You can shift the image, mirror the image, repeat the image. You can even do poster mode like we did in kindergarten, where it tiles it all out and you tape it all together for a big poster. All right, the tailoring section. These are all basically different versions of the same thing. And this is one of those things probably nobody will use, but just in case it'll save you Sundays. Insert sheet, just like most of these modes, lets you tell it from certain page numbers or at certain page numbers to pull from a different drawer. So what that means is if you've got an 80 page document for the annual report, and it's got 20 chapters, but the first page of every chapter is supposed to be on cardstock or yellow paper or something special like that and you got to make a hundred sets of this for the board. You used to have to make a hundred sets of the body of the document and then a hundred sets of all the chapter settings and then sit in the hallway with it all laid out one Sunday afternoon, flipping to page 22, flipping to page 34, flipping to page 45, putting it in the binder, etc., etc. This you just tell it, page 22, pull from bypass, page 34, pull from bypass, page 45, pull from bypass, hole punch it, comes out, done, put it in the binder, and you go. So again, not worth it for a copy or two or even 10 sets. But if you're doing a big job or something, that is super clutch. I had people cry and cheer and clap. <laughs> Usually not. And you've also got stamp composition. So you've got date and time stamping, page numbering, set numbering. And you've got stamps and watermarks. Stamps are physically on the page, where you want them, how big you want them, what color you want them. And there's urgent, top secret, do not copy, draft, et cetera, et cetera. Those get used sometimes. Um, watermarks are a little bit more popular because that fades it real big in the background of the page. You've got copy, draft, private, et cetera, et cetera. And you can even overlay, a registered overlay, you can even basically create your own watermark and pick what density you want it so you can have Village's logo or whatever, kind of like a copyright symbol or unsigned or something like that. And you can pull those up there after you store them. Um, copy protect, pretty much useless. It puts a code on the page. It's like a little barcode, so if somebody walks up to one of the machines and tries to make a copy of it, they can't do so without the password that you provided to the machine. But they can go home and use any other little inkjet copier if it's not a copy mill. So this is for like sealed buildings and stuff like that. Um, you've got frame erase, non-image non area erase. We want to keep it open. It'll get rid of that black. Um, and card shot. Card shot is here at the end. Again, you might not ever use it, but some people use it every day. Basically, with card shot, you lay a driver's license down right in the upper left hand corner, push start, you flip it over, lay it in the same exact spot, push start. It puts them both here on one page and zooms them in. So, like dentist offices and stuff, they do this like 200 times a day. So, it's just gigantic. Because you used to have to make a copy, get it over here, <laughs> get it one sided, put it back in the bypass, and run it again. So, card shot's super handy, but it's only if you're copying IDs and stuff all the time. All right, so that is basically every copier and print function under the sun. Any questions so far, or anything we kind of skipped as far as copy stuff goes? Okay. Um, often, one error you might get, especially if you're copying weird, odd size originals or something, um, put it on here, it'll say no matching paper size. Just make sure to read it, and it's like, oh yeah, this is like invoice paper or something. Then you can just pick the drawer you actually want the paper to come out on, because if it doesn't have it, it's going to be bitten and say, I don't have it. So that's what it's up to. Alright, scanning. Walk up to the copier, again it's going to be on the copy screen. Hit fax slash scan, hit your name, push start, it's in your email as a PDF. That's scanning. Every day, all day, that's the way to do it. If you want to get a little fancier, there's stuff at the bottom. First button is one-sided, that's going to tell it 
two-sided, that means it's going to read both sides of the document you put in the doc feed. And depending on what model you have, everybody now has dual scan single pass, so yes, it is scanning both sides at the same time. Just because it's not pulling it back in does not mean it's not copying the other side. We'll get more air calls about that later. Um, resolution. This is your biggest determinant of quality, but it's also your biggest determinant of file size. So if you've got an old cruddy copy and you're making a scan and it's set to black, you turn it up to 600 by 600, it's not going to be a big problem unless you've got like 50, 60, 70 pages. You're going to want to watch it a little bit. Color is where you really will run into it. If you want to make a color scan, hit the color button, set to black as default, hit auto color. The reason why it's set to black as default is because hopefully that's normally what you're doing, but also because if you do a color page, and let's just say it's set at the default 200 by 200, you should be fine. Getting up to three or four pages may be a little iffy. If you've turned up the quality to 600 by 600, you're talking one or two pages before the copier will beep at you. It is not the copier running out of memory. In fact, it's a really cool function that the copier will beep at you and already gets a relay from your email server that it has reached its file size maximum. I don't know if you've ever sent something on your computer that was like 80 megabytes and you send it, no relay, doesn't tell you it got kicked out, your client just didn't get it. So this will actually beep at you and tell you that it has reached the email file size size restriction. I don't know what y'all's is set at, usually it's pretty high these days, but all email systems have it. Um, so you want to watch it when you've got it on color, when you've got four or five pages, you wanna, that's why it's probably going to beep at you unless your file size restriction is really high. If for some reason it's beeping at you and you've got 10 color pages and you have just got to send them through email, hit file type after you choose color and hit compact PDF. If you haven't chosen color, it'll beep at you because that's all that function's for. It'll take a little longer to send, a little longer to open, a little longer to print, and the quality isn't so grand, but it will reduce the file size by a lot because it's compressing it, so that's a good thing. This is where you can also choose TIFFs, JPEGs, etc., etc. You can even scan PPTXs right into a PowerPoint file, which is kind of cool. Haven't seen many uses for it yet, but it is doable. And if you are constantly needing high color scans, this is an issue. Compact PDF isn't going to work. I need the quality. We can set it up where you can have a one touch, so it'll scan directly to your computer as long as it's on the local network. And that's unlimited file size. So you can even have a shared drive that everybody can scan to and they know where to go to get their files, et cetera, et cetera. And even FTP sites, which is cool. Um, if for some reason you hit the scan button, you don't see your name right up front and you use the copier all the time, um, just ask that it be added to the favorites list. Usually are indexed if there's hundreds and hundreds of emails, like on here, that they're all under the letter. But if you use it all the time and your favorite screen's not too crowded, it's handy to just have it up front so you can just tag it right away. Scan size, you put it in there, it's normally going to know what it is, unless it's some weird size, it'll ask you. But otherwise, if you need to dial in a four and a half by five and a half, something weird, and that's what you want the PDF size to be, you choose scan size and you can do a custom size. Name, subject, name, other. This is a super cool function. Do it before you hit your name, because as soon as you hit your name, it automatically names the file, some googly gop stuff. If you're scanning one thing, don't bother. That's not a big deal. If you're going to sit here and scan multiple items, like 10 items, and you have to go back to your computer and then open up every single one, because they might not be in order, you don't remember what order you scanned it in, it, open it up, see what it is, file, save as, and then name it and put it where you want it. If you want to do it from here, just hit name subject. You can name the file right off the bat. So you can say village contract number two. Hit OK, and then pick your destination, and then send it. And that way, when you get to your computer, they're all already named. You just drag them wherever you want them to go. You can also always send to other people and or multiple people. In fact, you can even create groups. Just remember, is nobody's going to know that you sent it. It's going to show up from the copier. So what you can do is hit Name Subject and change the subject, like, hey, everyone, here's that file you wanted. Here's the expense report for 2018, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a good place to put a little note. Um, don't change the from. It should be locked out, but that kind of messes with settings and security and all that kind of stuff. All right, separate scan. This is also on copy, but pretty much useless on copy. It is hugely handed on scanning. Handy. It's separate scan. It's just an on-off button. All that does is now 
when you push your name, you put your doc in, push start, it will not send it right away. It's going to ask you, do you have anything else? You can also default that on. This allows you to now put three receipts down, push start. Put a check down, push start. Put five more pages in here, push start, like for expense reports or whatever. And it's going to ask you when you're done, push yes, and then push start to finish, or send. Now that will all be in one PDF file, so it allows you not to just trigger the automatic stuff and then quick send. And again, this is all the basics. Everything that it does is under application. A lot of that date time stamping and all that kind of crazy stuff we went over is also on the scan section. Let's see here. All right. Uh, if we have somebody whose email is not in the system, they can type it in to scan the Correct. Right? Um, right here, address registration. And if you to text address, you can just hit new and address type. You go to a drop down. This is where you can do groups, SMBs directly to a computer, user boxes, fax, and email is what you choose. Don't choose a number, that'll automatically be assigned. Um, this is where you'll type in your name, that's the display name that's going to be on the thing. A sort character, it'll automatically go by that first letter, but what you also want to do is in index, you want to choose, oh, that's actually right here, they shortcut it, add it at the favorites if you want that on that front screen, where you can instantly view it, and scroll down a little bit, and you type in your email there, and then hit register, and it'll be on there. And you can send outside the company if that security function is off and or on, um, but again, they won't know it's really from you. So it's really better to always just scan it to yourself and then forward it to them. That way you can type a message and they know it's from you and they can reply to you. But if for some reason you need to just direct input for one, hit direct input, hit email, type in the email and that's where it'll send it. Um, should be pretty similar to functions and names, etc., from the old copiers, other than there were buttons on the side here. That's now digital. You just hit this little arrow thing that brings that over. Not too many people use these, but you can hit the interrupt function. Um, what that's for is if you come up here and you came from the front and somebody needs their contract copied right away, like right now, and somebody's running a big job. Just hit the little arrows, hit interrupt. It'll pause their job. You can make your copies. It'll automatically unpause it after about 60 seconds. You run away, it starts their job right back up. Nobody ever knew you were here. That's for copy. That's what interrupt is for. But a handier function that people usually run into is they have printed something. They get up here, and you can go to job list. This is on every screen, and this is going to tell you everything that's going on with the machine. And what's probably happened is you've printed something, and up here it says, Jeremy, time stored an hour ago. <coughs> Number of copies, 1,000 and it's running this huge job, but you've got to have this one page kicked out right away, just hit increase priority, and then choose your job from the list, and hit start. It'll pause their job, spit your job out, start their job right back up, nobody ever know you're there, so it's great. You can also delete jobs and things from this, but try not to do that. Um, it shouldn't hold up any jobs or anything, but if it's been there forever, or it's yours or something, it's aired out, just delete that. So how does that work on the print, like physically on the print, print tray side? How is that, how are you gonna pick yours out from theirs? Oh, it's gonna just... spit it out right on top, mm -hmm. but it's gonna pause between their sets. Like okay. if it's doing booklets or something, it's yeah. gonna finish that one booklet so it doesn't mess it up. Yeah. But yeah, you wanna go ahead and grab your stuff or whatever. It will shift it, so okay. it'll be kind of offset. offset. You know, if they don't have stapler or anything, it'll shift yours off to the right. <coughs> If you want to get a little more fancy and or access other menus, there's this home menu button. So same thing here, hit fax slash scanner, hit scan slash fax, hit copy, hit copy. You've also got user box, and this is where you can get to utility and address book and sound settings and whatnot. Um, so not as useful considering everything's right here. User boxes is kind of the last thing I'll go over, and this might be new to a few people, and you might want to start using it, and you might not. Everyone can have their own user box, or you can have public user boxes. You can lock them with a password or not. Um, basically, you can print things and or scan things into your user box. The automatic default is like it'll erase it every 48 hours or whatever. 
um, but you can go get it and print it out. If it's something confidential, you can do a secure print and that's just a temporary, but I like to have a user box. You go to it, open it, there's your files for the day, print out which ones you want, et cetera, et cetera. You can even default that from the print driver. Um, you go file, print, output method, and choose save in my user box and you tell it what user box number. Um, but what it's more handy for is like documents. So you can have forms on here and you open it up and like we've got our Novatech brochure saved in this one, but you can have forms like fax cover sheets, uh, closing docs. So what I have mine in my user box is several things, but my handiest one is closing docs. We've got a the proposal that needs signed that's a PowerPoint. We've got a service agreement that needs signed that's an Excel sheet. We've got a customer agreement that needs signed that's a Word document. So every time I need blanks, I've got to open like five different programs, print them out, come here and get them and either make copies of sets or whatever. But all I did was make one nice clean stack, scan it in, and so now when I need closing documents, I open up, say, give me 12. And I run off and it's all just done. It's stored on the machine. I didn't even have to get on my computer. I'm in and out. Nobody ever knows the difference. So it's super fast, can be super handy. You can, again, you can have public or your own or whatever. So if you ever want to get into that, or it's like something, just call me. I'm like, yeah, here's how I set up a user box. It's pretty easy. Um, all right, jams and stuff. It'll eventually do that too. Again, if it's doing it at the beginning a lot, don't just clear the jam every other day. No, call. Like, this can be fixed. So when you get a jam, this is the basic screen that'll come up, and it says you have a jam, and I'll have a little dot of where it thinks the jam is. Usually it's quite correct. Um, but the paper path is particularly short. It comes right out of the drawers, and there's just basically two or three spots to open here. There's a little banner here, the bypass tray comes out, and this is basically a wall. You don't have to reach into anything, it just comes out of the drawer, up the wall, and through there. And there's a little hand print, which is where you close it right here, a little hand symbol. And that's how you get that squeezed in without jamming it too bad. Comes out through here, so they can sometimes be right there. And then the finisher. Green is good. Just make sure when you pull this out to pull it out kind of slowly if the paper's there, because otherwise it'll rip a bunch. And anytime you're pulling out a jam, just pull it out slowly, not just, oh, I found it, because you'll leave scraps in there and that'll mess with the sensors and everything. But green is good. They're magnets, so you're not really breaking anything. You just kind of pull that down, it'll click back on. You can rotate this to make sure the paper gets out cleanly where you can get to it. That's where it'll go. So after you clear your jam, invariably you'll shut everything and go, why is it not cleared? Always read the messages. It says, hmm, the part indicated by arrow is open. Ensure that it's properly closed. Oh, right there. I always forget to push this down and make it click tight, and then I always forget this. And then it'll warm up just a little bit and then start your job right back up. Uh, your toner and whatnot, this is your waste toner. And then this is your regular toners. So you don't have to re replace fusers or anything. We do that for you, um, or imaging units. So anytime it gives that air, always just call and place a service call. Um, but toners are right here. They're key coded. You can't accidentally put that one in that one. But it's going to warn you when levels are low. And so when it is, go ahead and change out the toner. It's always got Y toner low. Y toner low. Don't walk away from it. Just switch it out. You don't have to go to the bitter end. But your gauges are right here. And it's always going to give you the warning. Stop button. If you need to stop a job, it'll always run like five more pages before it ever stops, but that is how you do it, and then you can delete the job. This is your favorite button. This is the reset button. All while you're navigating, do stuff, get lost, do too much stuff, this puts everything back to default and resets everything to the main screen. Doc feed might be a little different than what you're used to. It's way deeper, it holds way more, so it has an elevator that pops up. It's going to do this sometimes just when you put the paper in there. Don't worry, the job's not starting. You don't have to rip it back out real quick or anything. It's just getting ready to scan it and by the measurement of the amount of paper that's in there. Hmm. Just trying to think of any other pitfalls and or tips or tricks. Of course, everybody's got a keyboard, so when you're naming files or doing any data entry whatsoever, you can always use the keyboard. 
anything with adding paper, like not overfilling it, or I know upstairs the Sally one has kind of a double. That's right. All right. Tray. So the double tray. This one's a little bit different. It has two large capacity trays. Several of the other machines are going to have one big tray, and there's a goofy picture in the middle that tells you to do something and it is the most undescriptive thing ever and we get more air calls about it. It's probably what you're talking about, dude. Mm -hmm. Because you stack the paper side by side in one big drawer, two stacks of letter paper like this. They need to be separated out and pushed off to either side. And it tells you this and there's even this stupid little yellow graspy thing. It invariably, nobody reads it and it's not that descriptive. So you just need to make sure they're spread out to the outside and that's how it'll keep full It'll automatically switch those stacks and run through, and it holds like 2,500 sheets. So hugely handy, but yeah, you gotta stack them in there. It's going up there 10 times a day when they first put it in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I don't know why they engineered it like that, or at least didn't come up with a better sticker. And then the fill line, is that kind of a white tab there? Yep, there's little white tabs, that's the fill line, and that includes for your universal drawers. These drawers hold any size paper. You always wanna make sure your guides are kind of tight and the paper's in there pretty good. If you need to switch out paper, you don't need to program any settings. You just pull the blue lever out and pinch this blue lever and pull it out and then squeeze it in tight to whatever paper size you put in there. It'll automatically know. Just make sure they're clicked in tight and ready to go. Now for the mini booklets, invariably you will try to make a mini booklet and it is going to beep at you because we don't have eight and a half by 11 paper in sideways. So if you're making a mini booklet, always just say, hey, put it in bypass tray. If you're using that a lot more than you're using legal paper, well then switch out the drawer and put letter paper sideways, basically because it can't turn it mm -hmm. to the fold. But you guys probably use a lot of legal paper, so it's handy just to put it in the bypass tray. Also for printing thick stock, it is super handy just to use bypass tray, and you don't have to do the settings up here unless for some reason you're making a copy, which hardly anybody does on thick stock. The best thing to do is go to your computer, <coughs> file, print, and go to properties, and under paper type, choose thick one, thick two, or thick three, or even thick four for the bypass. That's up to 160 pound index. So that's like really thick business cards. Um, there is no real gauge for it. Thick one is just kind of thick. Thick two is a little bit more thick, and on up the thing. I always just put it to thick three because it'll duplex that and the whole thing. You don't have to pick a paper tray. You don't have to do any of that. Just tell it paper type thick three. When you get here, there will be an error. It'll say, I do not have matching paper size, eight and a half by 11, thick three. Please place in bypass. Throw it in the bypass and it starts printing. That way nobody prints on your stuff. You don't gotta mess with tray settings. If you're doing it a lot, well then you can go back and it's still gonna save that tray setting. But that's the easiest way is just get up here and it waits on you. And the final thing too, I'll send instructions on it and I forgot my sample. Actually, I do have one in the car I'll show you. It's for daughter's birthday. Um, but it'll do banners, 47 by 11 inch banners. And you can get banner paper that's like 40 by 11. You might have to ask Athens or whatever to get it for you, depending on it. But the longest it'll do is 47 inches. And you turn on banner printing and I'll send a guide for this. And I've got even got a PowerPoint that's really the easiest. You tile out images, just make sure they're high res because you're going to have to stretch them out a lot. You have a lot of area to fill, but it'll do 47 inch long banners. Anything from happy birthday to laying out complete guidelines and plans for a home. So it is kind of handy and kind of cool. Is the mobile printing something we can get into now? Or is that? Um, yeah, we'll go over that later, considering there's like three different versions. Okay. And we'll figure out okay, so there's near field and there's Bluetooth, and like, well, what do we need to do here? But yeah, the best way is to have the print driver installed. Um, but if not, there's the Konica Minolta app and that works with AirPrint and everything else. And as long as you're on the same network connected Wi-Fi that this is on, you just say search for printer, it finds the printer and you print to it. And it's got the functionality and everything. And that's one easy way, but there is some more advanced ways. We'll go over that for sure. Okay, see so any other questions you get often? Nope, pretty much went over everything. Yeah, and let me know if that stuff comes up too, because y'all had about three or four years of customization of the old ones, and you've had three or four days of this one. You've heard me use that quote <laughs> because it comes up often. But anything from like the beeping, it's like, oh, I hate it. Every time a fax comes, beep, 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 we can turn that off. You know, there's a bunch of easy stuff. So anything comes up, people are annoyed with, let me know. I may just say, no, that's what it does, but most likely we can turn it off.
Thanks. No problem. Oh, do not copy money. That's a new little sticker they have on it. It's always been that functionality. Put a coin or a $20 bill in there and push start. You'll hear a big clank and the whole machine locks down. And you have to call us and we have to call the feds. And then the feds have to sit on the phone and do this whole big coding system and check you out, do a background check and the whole schmeal. And then we can turn it back on. But yeah, so don't copy money. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah, I like that. Well, I mean, like like, uh, <laughs> for like kids' bucks, you know, or something, they put their picture on the thing, but it still picked up the little bar. Oh, it's really? Just like, yeah, they're just trying to make it. Yeah, don't copy money. Hmm.